to perfecting their performance skills, modern musicians today need to be executives and businessmen on their own with a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. They can learn that at the Eastman Institute for Music Leadership here at the Eastman School of Music. Here to talk with us about that is the Associate Professor of Music Leadership and the Director of the Institute for Music Leadership at the Eastman School of Music, Rachel Roberts. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me here, Eric. And who's our guest today? This is my dog. She's also a registered therapy dog, Coco. And she comes to the office with me most Fridays as a therapy dog in IML. Oh, we're delighted to have you here on a Friday so we could meet Coco as well. You bet. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's 25 years for the Institute for Music Leadership? It is. We just celebrated our 25-year anniversary and had a big celebration during Meliora Weekend on October 1st. Oh, and Meliora Weekend is basically the showcase for the University of Rochester, as I understand. It is. The Alumni Weekend, the Parents Weekend, chance for everyone to come back and, and celebrate oh. their, their home in Rochester. Oh, and did you have alums of the Music Leadership Institute uh, visit you during? We did. Uh -huh. So we had uh, a couple days of activities. On, on Friday, we had a networking event connecting our alums with current students, which was really lovely. And then on Saturday, we had a celebration recognizing the past leadership that have gotten the Institute for Music Leadership to where it is today. So we recognized all of the past leadership as well as talked a little bit about the future directions of the department and, and where we aim to go. And then the most fun was uh, unveiling of an alumni wall in our office. Oh. So we have every name of the individuals and, and Eastman students and alums who have participated and graduated with either a certificate or a degree from IML. And we had a big unveiling, which was lovely. And as of this coming May, uh, we will cross over 500 names off that oh, list. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's quite a milestone. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Well, and your position is new, and you've created some new programs to go with that, as I understand. Yes. So I am a graduate of Eastman. I was a flute performance major back in the day, but came back to Eastman and to Rochester about four and a half years ago uh -huh. to start and run the Master of Arts in Music Leadership. It's a new graduate degree. Um, it has transitioned to be a fully online degree. So oh. we have learners all across the country. Oh. I've had a couple in uh, China as well participate. And we have a mix of synchronous and asynchronous courses. Uh -huh. Uh, all with the understanding of teaching business skills, leadership skills, and developing musicianship. Yeah, I think that uh, for uh, many people now, when they think of a musician, they think of someone who writes a song in their bedroom and records it on their their and becomes an influencer and a, a you know a YouTube sensation and all the rest. And there's a lot that goes into it. It's not exactly that. And it, would you say? <laughs> I would say that you are exactly right. There is a lot that goes into it. And, you know, certainly performing on the stage is a big piece of it. This degree is at Eastman because we are working with students and professionals who are musicians at their core. Um, this degree also aims to build some of the other non-traditional skills that you learn outside of your performance studio. Mm -hmm. Marketing skills, finance skills, fundraising and development, um, music administration and governance. And all of the courses that are required are taught by faculty who are professionals in the field. I see. Who are running orchestras or ballet companies or running their own consulting firm or a music business attorney who's one of only four or five doing what he does in the country right mm -hmm. now. That's part of the beauty of the online degree is that we're finding the best in their craft and what they do and are having them teach online courses for us at, at Eastman. Some of them are Eastman alums who have moved on and in, in doing things across the country. Uh, but it's it's been wonderful to see how that program has grown in the last four and a half years. Oh, that's fascinating. So that part is online. Mm -hmm. And then are there mentorship or internships? How do they design their course of study? Yes. 
if a student uh, pursues this full time, it's about a 14 month experience. Nice. So a first summer of coursework, a full academic year of coursework, mm -hmm. and then the second summer would be the capstone experience. Um, a capstone can take two different shapes primarily, or at least that we've seen so far. One is uh, doing an intensive research project, putting a business plan together for something that a student may want to do and, and launch upon graduation. Or the second is working with a national level organization, taking on a, a project that they have authority over and get to learn from, uh, but also be mentored by the professionals in the organization that they are working with. Uh, so past projects have included uh, students partnering with Street Symphony, which is uh, working with the residents on Skid Row in LA. Um, I've had other students work with Interlochen or Aspen Music Festival in school. Um, two students now have worked with Mass MoCA, Massachusetts Museum mm -hmm. of Contemporary Art. Uh -huh. They have helped to run the Bang on a Can Festival. Um, really that capstone, the way that they end their degree, is a way to put everything that they have learned into practice. So those are very individually customized and designed, uh, individually designed experiences to really meet the student's need of what they are interested in and what they want to be going and doing in the future. I see. And so uh, are these primarily local or are they national or international? All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> we actually had one student last year. She was our first international experience. Mm -hmm. She partnered with a local organization called the Outer Loop Theater. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but the Outer Loop Theater uh, typically takes groups of theater students and professionals to Tanzania in Africa to work with the communities and the tribes there. Mm -hmm. um, on finding out what they need to live in their community. Mm -hmm. And then they work with the individuals who, who live in Tanzania to develop some type of a theater production. Mm -hmm. They come back here to Rochester or to the US and fully put together a theater production based on those themes oh. and what they heard from those residents that live there. They then produce it and perform it, a lot of the money that is then raised from those ticket sales goes back into the community in Tanzania to help them build different things. Oh, isn't that fascinating. So past projects have been building a well so they don't have to go down to the river and worry about being eaten by crocodiles. Um, right now, one of the things that has just launched and what this summer was about was building a new performing arts center. They don't have any of that. Oh. So our student who went down there had a life-changing experience and actually has just been hired on October 1 to be uh, the co-managing director of the organization. Oh my goodness, that so. is really an international bridge then. It is, it is. And so are these opera companies and sym symphony orchestras uh, uh, that engage you yes. and for internships and mentorships? Yes, And these absolutely. are paid positions? Um, these are for credit, so they earn credit while doing it. There is a stipend to help support uh -huh that travel and that experience See, as and well. How are things funded? Um, uh, are they, uh, is there a funding stream for this? A, a Schaus program, for instance? Or? Right, right. So we have started fundraising a bit for it, mm -hmm. which is great. And all of the students who have participated in the program in the last four and a half, five years have received some type of scholarship to I support see. their studies nice. as well. And so this is a giving opportunity, in other words. It is. It is. <laughs> and how Absolutely. would people find uh, the Institute and learn about you online? Right. If you just go to Google and type in Eastman Institute for Music Leadership, you can find us. And our just released website, newly released, we had a website uh, redesign that right talks right. a lot about all of our programs, all the opportunities that we have. Uh, for students as well as others in the community. We have programs not just for students as well. That's fascinating. Now you mentioned conferences and events. What, what yeah. kind of conferences and events do you host during the year? 
Yeah, well, I just came back from Long Beach, California. I participated in the College Music Society Conference. Wow. So a year ago, Eastman and in Rochester hosted the CMS conference here mm -hmm. in, in Rochester. It was the first conference post-COVID that had been held in downtown <laughs> Rochester. Yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> so it went well, and uh, Eastman has an active participation with CMS. So I was there in oh. Long Beach helping to present at, at one of the keynote forums, which was great. It was a consortium of 20 of us across the country who were on a, a president's task force for leading change. Uh -huh. So we all instituted some type of program or activity that helps to move equity and inclusion and diversity initiatives forward on our campus. Uh -huh. And we talked about the lessons that we learned and how to continue doing this moving forward as all of us look towards change. Yes, isn't that so? Mm -hmm. um, inspiring change and finding new models for performance for yes. chamber orchestra and symphonic. That's part of your mission as well. As it, seems. it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your, um, your students have designed their own programs or designed innovative ways right. to go about it. Right. Wonder what success stories do you have that you can share about some of that, perhaps? Absolutely. Well, let me back up and talk a little bit about those programs and how students yeah. have gotten there. So the MA in Music Leadership, that's one of our newest opportunities that we have. But one of the oldest opportunities mm. is the Arts Leadership Program. Yes. That's what just celebrated 25 years. And I'm a graduate of the Arts Leadership Program uh. back in the beginning days. That experience, it's a, a competitive experience. We have a limited number of students that can participate. They take coursework, they do internships. Many of those internships are here locally in Rochester, mm -hmm. though a lot of the summer experiences are abroad, either nationally or internationally. And then there's um, all of that put together along with advising. That's the Arts Leadership Certificate Program. Oh, I see. And that is the number that will cross over 500 students with this year's students oh, who are graduating. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And those who have graduated from this program have gone on to be leaders both on and off the stage. Uh -huh. Some who have started their own ensembles, like Melissa Non. She had started the Fifth House Ensemble based in Chicago, Illinois. And this organization was extremely creative looking at how they provide educational services working with Chicago Public Schools, oh. integrating music within the lessons that were already being taught in history and in English and whatever's already in the curriculum. Separate from that, she uh, was working in a couple different mediums integrating music with other art forms. Uh -huh. So one of her projects was working with a, a visual artist to create graphic novels. Uh. Um, another project that they did was with video games and, and music and, and had a live video game production going on as they were playing and the audience could actually choose what was happening with the video game so they would have to be quite responsive as performers to change the music as the game went on. That's one example of yeah. hundreds of examples. Oh, that's fascinating. Well, yeah. new models for the performing arts and the arts in general are, are right. critically yes. for success these days. Yeah, I think a big piece of it is, it is not just understanding who you are as a musician and the art that you and music that you want to be making, but how is it relevant? Mm -hmm. How does it connect with a community? Yes. What is the work that a community is doing? And how can you be a vibrant participant of that? And, and it's so important to be able to communicate about right. the art. And even if you're a, a professional instrumentalist, you still need to be able to write your resume and other things. Do you Absolutely. offer advice about that? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a part of IML is, is the whole career advising, career whether advice. it's uh, resumes or cover letters or CVs or mock interviews oh will do with students or mock master classes because oh. often as uh, students and alums go into an interview situation to be a professor at a college they have to give a master class as well I so see. on occasion we have partnered with faculty members to lead mock master classes for students so they can test it out 
and get feedback from all of us in a safe and supportive environment before they go to actually do the real thing in the interview. Oh, that's extremely valuable mm -hmm. career advice and mm -hmm. development. Oh, that's yeah. fascinating. Well, congratulations on a very Thanks. broad spectrum and uh, important yeah. offering. That, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. The thing that I really love about it is that so many of the alums who have graduated from Eastman at large, but also from the programs in IML are continually calling and connecting and emailing and saying, how can we help out? Does a student need an internship? And you know, they're so generous in giving back because they see how much value it's provided them and their own careers. And Honestly, that's one of the reasons that I'm back here at Eastman, because the lessons that I learned through the Arts Leadership Certificate Program set me on my path, you know, and uh, never did I imagine I'd, I'd be back here in Rochester <laughs> at Eastman 20-some years later, but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's such a joy to be back. And are, are these um, auditioned Eastman students, or do they enter the institute separately, or mm -hmm. how do students come to you? Sure. Most students who we interact with are Eastman students, so they've already auditioned, gotten in as a performance major. Um, those who are seeking the MA in Music Leadership degree, that's part of an Eastman audition. I see. So students have to submit, you know, typical materials, and then they also do a performance audition. Uh -huh as well as a 10-minute presentation oh. talking about the music that they perform. To your point about being excellent communicators, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things that we try to do in all the programs at IML is help students understand how to be effective communicators. Oh, but most students that we work with do come through the, the typical channels at Eastman. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple programs that are well, we call it Eastman's uh, ABCs of music leadership. <laughs> so in June, we have three summer programs. Oh. Uh, one is the Eastman Leadership Academy. The second week is the Eastman Leadership Boot Camp. And then the third week is the Eastman Leadership Conference. Uh -huh. And the academy is for college age students all across the country. We've had some internationally as well participate. It's an online five day intensive to introduce them to the topics of leadership that we work with and, and train students on all year round. The boot camp is more for professionals who have graduated early in their career, never had this type of training, and they're like, oh my gosh, I should have had this type of training. Uh, yeah. So we do a, a different, more intensive, uh, more focused, rather, five-day experience going over many of the the big concepts that are in the Master of Arts and Music Leadership degree, finance and fundraising, equity and inclusion, leadership. So we have a day focused on every topic. And then the conference, the third week in June, is our uh, four-day experience for mid-career professionals looking to grow and expand their leadership skills, specifically in higher education. I see. Yeah. Uh, so those are programs that we engage externally. Uh -huh. uh, out, we, we do have a lot of Eastman students and alums participate, mm -hmm. but those are primarily the uh, programs that are looking outward. Right. Sounds fast. Mm -hmm. And give us the website just one more time so everyone's fascinated. Huh? Yeah, iml.eastman.rochester.edu. Okay. Or just go to Google and type in Eastman Institute for Music Leadership. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so now, Tell us about our guest, Coco. Coco? Hey. Oh, are you sleeping? So Coco ended up being my pandemic puppy. So I started work from home on March 19th, uh -huh. and she came home on March 21. Oh, my. And I had been planning to get a dog, but it just coincided with the pandemic. And I had always wanted to get a dog. A friend of mine had done therapy dog with her therapy dog work with I her see. dog, and I thought, oh, that'd be really fun. So, aside from working and teaching online at home during the <laughs> pandemic, yeah. the one thing that I did was work with her and train her uh, to be a registered therapy dog. And what does that entail? It entails a lot of treats and a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
your dog has to be at least one year old to begin therapy oh. dog training. Ah. So we started, we had to go through two rounds of that class. She was still too food motivated and couldn't leave it enough. Uh. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's the regular AKC training that you would do uh, with a dog if, if you wanted to go through formal training. But then there's a couple added weeks of different uh, simulated and, and uh, noise making opportunities or different things that you may not normally encounter just with a pet at home. Um, and it's, it's trying to get your dog desensitized to a lot of these things so that they can pay attention to you, follow you in any environment, and really be of a, a service to the community. Um, so she comes to the office with me on most Fridays. <laughs> we also do a lot of other work in the community. We are registered with Rock Dog which is a new organization a year and a half old oh here my. in Rochester. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of services does uh, Rock Dog provide, I wonder? Well, Rock Dog has, I want to say, probably close to 200 partners in the community. I know there's over 125 dogs and over 150 volunteer handlers as well. Oh, who would imagine? And so we all volunteer our time. The founder, Paul Anthony, has this massive list and he puts calendars out and, and says okay here's the location sign up where you want to go and when you can go and we all just sign up when we can go or places that we know our dogs work well at or avoid the ones where our dogs don't work as I well see, yeah. because there are many different environments and and uh, therapy dogs you know, provide such a great service in the community. And what kind of service is it? Is it identifying an emergency, or is it uh, alerting help, or is it providing <laughs> care, or what is it, a dog, you know? A All of the above. All of the above. So Coco and I have gone to some senior centers to visit residents. Mm -hmm. And it just lights up their day. They're yeah. like, I've been looking forward to this all week, you know, and just spending time with them, connecting with them for sometimes it's it's just a quick 30 second 60 second visit and sometimes we'll sit there and have a conversation for five or ten minutes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, so that's more of a comfort mm -hmm. right in in those instances um, we have gone to the 911 call center as well it's a very high stress environment um, and the individuals that work there do an incredible job responding to all the calls that they get when we are there, if someone is not on the phone and they turn around and want to engage, you can just immediately see their stress decrease a little bit, right? They're interacting with something soft and fluffy yeah, and friendly. tail wagging. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's just meant to be, again, a comfort and a, a stress relief. And, you know, there was recently... Uh, in, in the news, the death of a senior at Penfield High School this week. And so we also, uh, Paul Anthony does have Rock Dog help in crisis situations oh. like this. So there's, uh, Coco and I are actually going on Tuesday, but there's dogs on Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, and throughout next week to be on site for the students and the faculty and the staff at Penfield High School. And that's just a very immediate example of a crisis situation, oh, yeah. but um, therapy dogs, you know, I don't know if if you've, you or anyone has ever been to the 911, 9-11 uh, museum in New York City, but one of the rooms is actually dedicated to all the therapy dogs and uh, that worked on September 11th and in the aftermath oh, of no that. Idea. Yeah, I it's, no it's, uh, incredible but therapy dogs it definitely exhausts her so she you know dogs also can absorb a lot of the stress and the feeling that that people have oh, yeah. and so she loves the visit she loves people mm -hmm. but she definitely sleeps the next day quite a bit when yeah, we get home that's something yeah Isn't that something and dogs have uh, you know amplified faculties where humans they are do. lacking in the, you know in terms they of do. smell and other yeah. senses and you yeah. know, they can sense uh, blood sugar, for instance. They can, And that sort yeah. of thing. Is um, Coco trained that way, or is that in the, in the picture? Yeah, or? so there's, there's different levels of training for dogs. Mm -hmm. So Coco's more supportive in terms of a comfort, right? That's mm -hmm. therapy dog. 
um, service dogs are ones that can help with sensing blood sugar, mm -hmm. sensing other things like that. That's a different level of training and certification for those mm -hmm. dogs. And then you have just the family pets that are amazing to have. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's multiple different levels of training for sure for dogs. And for now, I think this is this is good for me and Coco. <laughs> well, that's very she exciting. keeps me on my toes for sure. <laughs> that's very, very, very exciting. And so now what does the future look like for IML and your work and you know, uh, the, yeah. what's on the horizon? Yeah, well, there's a lot of exciting things. Uh, especially because Eastman is also celebrating an anniversary. It's our 100th anniversary. Yes. And we're just finishing a huge year and a half celebration of that milestone. So there's a lot of exciting things going on at Eastman in particular. Uh, what we're looking at for IML is how can we continue to provide the career and leadership development opportunities for musicians on and off the stage. Mm -hmm. We are looking at more online programs that reach learners outside of Rochester mm -hmm. as one area. For students here, we're looking at developing some more um, specific tracks of learning. So if someone wants to focus on music and health, how could we develop a track of coursework there or in community engagement programs or some of these more specified tracks that we're seeing as career options post-graduation. Um, and another third big piece of, of what we're doing is taking a dive into research. Um, we have a couple students who are working with us as research assistants to better understand industry trends, where things are growing and developing, but then also helping us internally at IML to um, track and assess all of those alums from the last 25 years. What has been most valuable in their development yep. while in school? What's been most valuable in their development after school? And what lessons can we learn to help inform how we are growing and developing in the future? So there must be grants that students can apply for. Yes. Well, that's another big piece of, of what we have in IML. We have four different grant opportunities, um, some specific for students, some for one for faculty, uh, another initiative, the Paul R. Judy grant, mm -hmm. um, funded by Paul Judy. He's also helping us to support all the research that we're doing in the I department. Mm -hmm. uh, but that grant in particular is for students and faculty and alums. So the grant initiatives are a very vibrant piece, you know, who, who could turn down an opportunity for <laughs> money that supports a project. Exactly. Yeah. So it's projects and research and, and new Projects, ideas and research, new ideas, and it's not just the financial piece of it, but then there's advising and support uh, on, on with the professionals that we have in our department. And I'm also exploring a new collaboration with four other schools across the country oh. to put uh, students in conversation with other students as they take on projects throughout the year. So it's students uh, at two schools in Michigan, one in Colorado and one in South Carolina. So this is an experiment this year and I'm, I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Well, we're excited to learn all about it. And thank you so much for telling us about the Institute for Music Leadership at the Eastman School of Music. Our guest has been Rachel Roberts. She is Associate Professor of, in, of Music Leadership at the Eastman School of Music and Director of the Institute for Music Leadership. Thank you so much for telling us all about it. And thanks for bringing Coco today. It's delightful. Thank you so much. In the Spotlight is a production of Penfield Television with sponsorship from Nokon and Associates, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Advisors. program, please find us on Facebook, like and share the program, and find our full playlist on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.